Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to come together again today. We're asking, Lord, that you instruct us in the way we ought to go and the things we ought to know so that your work will prosper in our hands. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Second Timothy chapter 2, looking at verse 15. Second Timothy 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Tonight, I want to take some time to talk to you on our duty of pleasing God in ministry. Our duty of pleasing God in ministry. I'm addressing this subject because last Sunday here at the combined service, I had to publicly tell the church that our Sadhguru Scripture teacher, the coordinator, didn't prepare himself very well. And I had to tell the church that the passage of Scripture that we study, it may take us another 10, 15 years before we come back to it. Therefore, whenever we come to study study scripture, those who are doing it in the districts should spend time and really prepare themselves so that we don't just come here and just read what's in the book and then the subtitles we have not prepared ourselves we just choose the subtitles that are already there in the book maybe add one just to give an impression we did a little study and the study last sunday was so poor that i had to really spend time to tell the church that when we give you opportunity to teach in our church here you don't take us in the leadership for granted and you don't take the church for granted you do your homework you study now i had to tell the church and i need to tell you too that you shouldn't come to the position to the level where you think it's uh, a crime for the pastor to correct you because we now give you a big title coordinator group coordinator overseer or region overseer state overseer national overseer whatever and i had to say and i need to tell you too that probably uh, being a pastor of this church before that person who taught became house fellowship leader and for the Probably all of you here uh, say the same thing. Therefore, please, um, this church is a teaching church. It's very important that we know that this church is a teaching church. And we want to maintain a teaching ministry. Therefore, when you have opportunity or privilege to do anything in this church please do your very best that you prepare yourself and so it will be very important and very necessary now when you have opportunity to do anything in the ministry you put in all your very best so that the Lord will know that you count it very important, 
very essential to serve the Lord. That's why I'm talking on this tonight. Just to remind you once again the responsibility that you have when you are called upon to do anything in the church. Look at it again. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, study. That means endeavor. That means do your very best. That means prepare yourself. Study to show yourself. Approved unto God. Now, do you see here? Not number one. Approved unto men. You know, you can do things in such a way that men are alright. You are approved unto men, but you are not approved unto God. Number two. You are not doing it to be approved unto self. You may do something and justify yourself and feel that's all right i've given my best i've done what i can do your goal your aim is not to be approved unto self three it's not to be approved unto the world you know if you want to please the world you cannot please the lord so here it doesn't say that you study to show yourself approved unto men or approved unto self or approved unto the world. But you study to show yourself approved unto God so that you will be a workman, a man working, laboring, serving the Lord. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly, properly, dividing, analyzing, putting in pieces, and then bringing together the word of God so that it will be truth to the hearts of the people. Our duty of pleasing God in ministry. First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so speak we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tries our hearts. Here it says, we have been allowed of God to be put in trust. Uh, the ministry is kind of a trust given to us. And it's by God. And it says, it's with that understanding, that conception that this is a great privilege the lord has given us with that conception that we're speaking or teaching or preaching then it says not as pleasing men and of course when it says not as pleasing men you're one even when you are the one preaching you're one of those men you are a man or you're a woman you don't want to please yourself you don't want to please men. You don't want to please a group of people. And you know the tendency is there today. For us to just feel once the ignorant people in my congregation, and sometimes they are always in the majority, once they are happy and they are satisfied, and I have been able to say some things that you know, they are able to clap or pray or get excited. And that's all. No. Not as pleasing men, but God. Who tries our hearts. In First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1. Furthermore then, we beseech you brethren, 
and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. I'm therefore appealing to everyone that has any privilege, any opportunity to serve the Lord in the church here, that your county is such a great privilege and you'll serve the Lord with all your strength, all your power, everything that's in you. And you prepare yourself so you can be the very best to the church of the living God. There are three points I'm going to consider. Uh, look up here. This is your Bible school. And if you have opportunity to learn make the best of it even people who come to visit us from other places you know they quickly realize that we are methodical and we structure our messages uh, the other american friend who came the other time by the time he went away he commented and said she was going to stay on three points because he realized that you know we always have our three points when i visited them over there you don't understand how their interaction with us even changes them and you know he'll you know prepare his things and it's not under my leadership then he'll show it to me and that's not even in deeper life and he'll say i got my three points i said well done if those outside are coming here to learn and then when you want to you know do your own to show that you are now a master of yourself you have four points one day if i don't talk some of you have your five points follow me as i follow christ when you have a leader and he's teaching you and you are learning follow that learning <laughs> don't you know come to the position where you feel you become above instruction above teaching above correction three points are you all right point number one preaching for the wrong approval preaching for the wrong approval our ministers, our teachers, preachers here should take care. They, they do not preach for the wrong approval. You do not minister for the wrong approval. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. It will be the wrong approval that we are seeking. When you are preaching, when you are teaching, when you are ministering, when you are doing anything in any part of the church, you are singing in the choir, you are ushering and maintaining law and order, orderliness in the church, you are teaching such the scripture, you are leading house fellowship, you are giving a conference message to preach. You are doing anything. Understand. You must not preach for the wrong approval. You mustn't seek approval from the wrong source or from the wrong people. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? And here Paul the apostle says for himself and for you and for me. If I yet please men... I should not be the servant of Christ. Then in 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Reading there from verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, test, examine the spirits whether they are of God. Because 
many false prophets are gone out into the world. He now tells us in verse 5, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. There are people that in their ministry, in their preaching, in their exposition, in their sharing, sermonizing, all they do is that they're trying to please the world. And the world is hearing them. And the worldly people are happy by the way they project and by the way they put their messages. Messages that never strike at sin. Messages that never bring any challenge, any conviction to repent and to turn to the Lord. And here it says, they are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world, and the world is hearing them. And then it says, we are of God. That's the apostle John, and then with the other apostles. They are of God, we are of God. He that knoweth God, heareth us. We keep to the scriptures. We keep to the truth given by the Spirit. And we give to the proper exposition of the word of God. And the people that are of God, you know, we're not trying to please them. We're pleasing God and we're calling upon them to come and please God. Those people that are of God, they hear us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Uh, that means then, you will not be like, you know, a politician. You know what politicians do, generally? And they want to know whether this is politically correct acceptable therefore they send out feelers and they want to know from the populace if i do this is it all right if i do this is it all right? they take a poll and then uh, well, from the feedback they get that's 70 percent 80 percent of the population they they give approval to this that's what the politicians will do but we're not like that. We're not sending out feelers. Do the people accept? Do the people believe what we're saying? Because even if nobody believes, those who do not hear us, they're not of God. Period. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong with us. You preach the word. Those who are of God, they will hear. Those who are not, not of God, they will not hear. We're not preaching to pull crowds. We're not preaching to make people stay or to make people go. We're preaching to please the Lord. And if we're trying to please the world, we'll never please the Lord. After all, the world hated Christ. And the world will hate us. So if you're preaching to be acceptable to the world, you'll miss the point. In Micah chapter 2 verse 11. Micah chapter 2. Reading there from verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people. That is, uh, you know, if somebody is not walking righteously, doesn't believe the truth, accept the truth, live by the truth, and is indulging the flesh, getting into drinking and all that. But if he knows how to talk, how to communicate, it will even be the prophet of these people. And those are the people that are pleasing. Uh, they please uh, the world. Preaching for the wrong approval. In Isaiah chapter 30. Verses 10 and 11. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. If you want to please the world in your preaching, 
you know what you're going to do because those people they don't like preaching that knocks their sin extracts the sin like you take jigao you know insect out of your body they don't like that they don't like the sharp edged sword that will cut them and remove the uh, object or remove the germs killing them destroying them it's too painful for them and so they want you to just preach smooth smooth things in isaiah chapter 5 Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Isaiah 5, verse 21. To them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And that's what, you know, preachers who uh, want to please their congregations that's what many of them do something good they call it evil something evil erroneous false they call it good right and proper but the bible says one to them they put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter they put good for evil and they replace evil they say that something is good and then in jeremiah chapter 5 jeremiah 5 verse 13 and verse 31 a wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land horrible what's it verse 31 the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means and my people love to have it so in the early days of this our church if anybody went astray in preaching even you know every retreat at that time we used to have question time every retreat every retreat and you can be sure at the time of the question time if anybody went up and I happen not to have noticed it and I didn't make any correction publicly. Somebody will ask question. Somebody who preached on this, this, this said such, such, and such. Is it right? And openly there because our concern at that time was to emphasize the truth. Not to pat anybody at the back. Not to honor anyone at the expense of the truth not to cringe crawl beg at the expense of losing the great treasure that the lord has given to the church openly and very clearly will say no that preacher was wrong this is the truth but nowadays The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and the people love to have it so. It's Brasso and so that said it. So don't talk. We love him. Teach error, teach falsehood. We just we just love him. In spite of what he, he doesn't know the scriptures too much, but he's a man. We love him. The people love to have it so and the lord had controversy with the children of israel because of that attitude and thank god you still have somebody here that doesn't love to have it so and i hope you have the same mind with me i want to hear you uh, this is the headquarters church we need to maintain the truth maintain the word of god and if you happen to preach and you go off and then we correct you you ought to be happy that if you were misleading people we try to bring those people back so that their blood will not be upon you preaching for the wrong approval point number two pursuing the right approval pursuing 
the right approval. In our ministry, whatever we're doing for the Lord, I'm not just preaching now, whatever we're doing in ministry, if you want to find out, who we'll see that will please God. How does God want me to minister? How does God want me to do or to stand in the place of ministry where he has put me and you pursue that right approval? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 9. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Paul the Apostle said, myself and my colleagues, we're laboring for one end, one purpose. We labor so that whether we are present or absent, we who are ministering may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And he's still talking about we believers and we Christians and, and we ministers and we apostles and we that have opportunities to minister to the people of God. We shall all appear, must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body that is while he's still in the body, while he's still alive according to that he has done whether it be good or it be bad the greek word for bad there just means useless worthless nothing whether it be good appreciable or worthless having no value he says knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men uh, if you knew the concern of the lord for the truth You'll be persuading all the workers under your leadership. As well as persuading sinners who are coming to the church many, many times. And yet they are not born again. And how sad. You know, one of those who came to me for counseling just said, Sir, help me. I was born again before. Or five years ago, I went into sin. And since that time, I just stayed in that scene just do it repeatedly 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 and i don't have any feeling at all he said first of all can you tell me as the spirit of god abandoned me have i committed the unpardonable sin is there any hope for me at all i said do you mean you come every week he said every week i listen i come I, and i go out right out of that place and i go back to my evil I sin. Five years. I said, I think what I need is deliverance. I said, no. You need repentance. You'll pray for me. I said, no. I went into a little bit of scripture. To lead him and to direct him. That this is what you are to do. Knowing the terror of God. I told him, I want to read the Bible about hell. And don't worry whether you feel afraid or not. After reading about that hell, believe it. Christ spoke about it. Knowing the terror of God, the judgment of God, the wrath of God, we persuade men. That's what we are to do. That's, you're pursuing the right approval. You want to be approved of the Lord. You're not looking at faces. You're not thinking about, you know, how do they feel? The way I'm preaching knowing the terror of the almighty god we persuade men but we are made manifest unto god made manifest unto god that is the bottom line that is the capstone of ministry not you're not thinking about what people see what people feel whether you become liked whether you become accepted appreciated whether they love you no, that's not the point made manifest unto god and i trust also we are made manifest in your consciences paul the apostle said well already we were seeking approval from god and i trust also you people that know and love the truth your consciences also 
for we commit not ourselves again unto you but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in the heart the point is clear there we're seeking approval before god verse 13 this is good for whether we be beside ourselves it's to god or whether we'll be sober it's for your cause you know, there are people that are afraid that people are going to call them eccentric. People are going to call them heaven, too much heavenly minded. People are going to make fun of them and they're going to say, the man is running nuts. But all the apostles said, whether we be beside ourselves, that's how some people think. When we preach the mystery of the kingdom, he said, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, reasonable, and you people think we're thinking right and we're going well, that's for your cause. In chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, verse 19, Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you, we speak before God in Christ, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying it says we're doing all this so that we're sure you are saved and we're sure you are living right and we're sure we're building you up we're edifying you and then in titus chapter 2 i want you to notice something here very important in titus chapter 2 and I want you to see how, if you are seeking to have the right approval, the message should touch every life and should turn everyone to the Lord. Before I read the verses, look at verse 2. The aged men. There's a message for them. Is it Titus? When you are preaching, have something for the aged men. Verse 3. The aged women likewise. Titus, you're preaching something. You want to be approved unto God. Touch the aged women. In verse 4, in the middle there, the young women. Titus, you want to be approved unto God. Don't just preach above their head. Don't just say something that doesn't rob anyone, pinch anyone, scratch anyone. Scratch them where they're itching. Touch the areas where their lives need correction. And then in verse 6, young men, likewise, Titus, let it touch everyone. And then in verse 9, exhort servants. Even those who are servants, give it to them. You see, when you are seeking approval from the Lord, and you know that all these people, they've come to church on Sunday, or they have come to church on thursday or anytime you are privileged to preach make it practical make it scriptural let it be something that touches every life that there is nobody in that congregation that will not hear something that will drive him to the lord come on now from verse one but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men be sober grave temperate sound in faith in charity in patience you see all that as what titus was to do verse 3 the aged women likewise that the being behaviors it becometh holiness aged women aged women that the be in behavior as it becomes as it fits is suitable for holiness and you know sometimes i'm surprised as some of our women leaders some of you are just in your early 40s you're not even aged yet and some of you in your early 50s you're not even aged yet and we cannot talk on holiness that your behavior your dressing your comportment and your relationship at home 
and what you do with your husband and with your children everything and what you do in your office that everything befits holiness and how many years have we are we in christ that we don't have convictions anymore and if the preacher if the pastor touches any area that pinches you a little scratches you a little it's like the pastor has started again no? this man he has not suffered enough this man he has, his eyes had not seen enough he has started again okay what are you going to do or to kill him we're helping you that you, whether you are aged or you are young, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm trying to help you. And here, Titus was to preach. And he was to tell the old women, aged women, that in behavior, in character, in conduct, in comportment, in every area of their lives, they are to be in behaviors. It becomes Holiness, not false accusers, not giving to much wine, teachers of good things. And that they teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all those things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness gravity sincerity sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that saw the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you it's when you preach like that you're seeking you're pursuing the right approval the only approval you want is the approval that comes from god in your ministry in first kings chapter 22 first kings chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 5 and Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, ask, I pray thee at the word of the Lord today. And then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. For the Lord shall deliver each into the hand of the king. Four hundred of them. They spoke. And he said, go up. They were all united. And Jehoshaphat, he doubted these people. And the thing didn't, he didn't have the ring of truth. There was no conviction in it. The spirit of God within him didn't give the approval that this is the truth. 400 of them, prophets. And he said, Let us see in verse 7. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord beside all these chorus prophets saying the same thing? that we might inquire of him and the king of israel said unto jehoshaphat uh, there is yet one man micaiah the son of imla by whom we may inquire of the lord but what are the next three words you know that that's why i'm happy if i know that there are some people that hate me and I'll take the words of Jesus I rejoice when I'm hated for the truth. I, I, it doesn't bother me anymore when they say, you know, 
all the churches are in agreement all the churches cooperate together and everything is fine but that man alone you know somebody is coming to have crusading in nigeria and you see the beat balls all over and he called me on the phone and spoke for about 43 minutes and he said you must get involved you must get involved and I cannot do it without you getting involved. I said, give me a chance. Let me find out some things. Oh, he said, you know, so-and-so is there, so-and-so is there, so-and-so is there. If it were not okay, will they cooperate? I said, give me time. And then he said, see, I was, he mentioned the country. And I met a Nigerian preacher. And that Nigerian preacher said, Ah, Kumuyi, he doesn't do anything with anybody. He said, That man told me. Oh, I said, Since the man told you, why are you, why are you bothering me? They told you already. He said, Come on now, join me so that you can prove them wrong. I said, No, I'm not going to try to prove them wrong. That's who I am. That I check up things before I get involved. And I checked up from people over there. And they went into details and told me. They said, please, please, please. Don't destroy your ministry. Leave that thing. Don't, don't, join, don't do anything with that man. Since that time. You know, people don't understand. When we take a stand, and there may be some, you know, deeper life people who are too strict. Why is it? Are we the only people? I don't know. I don't know whether we're the only people, but I don't know them, but I know myself. So, this man said, there is one man. We can ask him, but I hate him. Why? For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Let, let's call him. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, His team, Heather, Micaiah, the son of Imla, and the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, such each on his own, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of samaria and all the prophets prophesied before them and zedekiah the son of shenana and uh, made him horn of iron and he said thus says the lord with these shall thou push the syrians until thou hast consumed them and they even demonstrated you know the preaching verse 13 that was gone to call Micaiah, spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. You see, bring washing here. See, 400. They're in agreement. You are the only remaining one now. Everybody is speaking well. Please, Micaiah, change. Uh -uh. Do you enjoy this isolation? Do you enjoy persecution? The king doesn't like you. All these 400, they don't like you. Don't you know? They want to live your life under the hatred of everybody. Change now. Please, when you come, don't talk like you've been talking. Oh. Talk well comfort the king assure him everything will be all right and Micaiah said as the lord liveth, what the lord says unto me that will i speak can deeper lives stand alone on the truth or are we going to allow all the many many churches pentecostal gospel all the churches everything is about prosperity it's about healing it's about faith it's about deliverance everything is about getting married everything is about breaking yoke everything is about material things can deep alive stand alone knowing what the others are doing knowing the pressure they are putting on us 
and knowing the way they want us to change that why is it these people are so uh, they're so eccentric why is it they are standing alone isolated and they will not you know manage things and adjust things and modify things why is it they're the only one can deeper life do like my care and you will not be intimidated by what people say by what people do and you will not adjust the message and you're not looking for crowd and one of the region overseers came to me today and said i came from all my region to comfort you i said what happened <laughs> what are you comforting me for oh he said because oh i said no problem that's injection all those things happening it's injection to make you strong all is medical test to test what you stand upon to know whether you really believe what you say you believe or not no problem but i, I appreciate you coming but you though know you came to comfort me let me talk to you because i know when you came long long ago will you still be standing yourself and that's the thing i don't need comfort and what's happening that i need comfort about have we not been told that in the last days perilous time shall come have we not been told that the love of many shall wax cold and when i see the love of many waxing cold doesn't it increase my faith on my lord and my savior that my jesus knew what will happen in the last days and he told me before time and that iniquity shall abound didn't jesus tell us and it increases my faith when i see all these things happening and this one is you know falling and this one is sliding and this one is you know changing and that one and then he tells me whosoever the one that will endure to the end the same shall be saved and then i make up my mind i will endure to the end how about you i said i about you i said i about you to endure till the end and last tuesday i think i came here and i told you that you know somebody uh, you know wanted to leave and that um, you know we spoke together and the person said oh you are my father i cannot take any step be, be without your approval i will i'm coming back i said go to the church secretary and settle the letter of resignation he went to the church secretary and he told the letter of resignation and i think the church secretary told me that the one month in lieu of notice he had paid to the church because he was leaving abruptly he collected the check back so we thought everything was okay and then he got back home who knows maybe the wife said what what did you go there to do you are not going back to that deeper life maybe some of his friends financiers the people that want to pump money into whatever they want to do maybe they said what uh -uh. if you establish this new thing we put money there and we get money out of it we're going to be you know i will be this you'll be this and then they you know he wrote to me again and said i'm sorry uh, what, when i came to you i wasn't thinking of changing my mind i only came to tell you that i'm sorry i didn't tell you before i'm now writing you to tell you that that thing i said i'm not saying it again i'm not coming back again and I got that letter just before the women conference. That, uh, that thing will just almost blow my mind that I will not be able to minister effectively at the women conference with all those thousands of women there. But I said, no problem, no problem. Fulfillment of the last days. Uh, the only thing is that, you know, uh, the Lord is telling me, be careful in trusting people too much you know because i trusted him so much I, I was so excited that this is a dependable person and i came to announce to everybody and you know he put my back on the ground you know that same week i just say uh, you know one of those things but in the midst of it all for you to be like Micaiah, and you're looking and pursuing the right approval and you say you're going to stand i pray you all stand Point number three, preparation for the right approval. Preparation for the right approval. You know, Ezra, I'll, I'll read it to you again. Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7, verse 10. For Ezra 
had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Brothers and sisters, that's how to do it. That you prepare your heart to seek the law of God. To live it out yourself. To build a strong, unshakable conviction on that law of God, watch of God yourself. And to do it, practice it, practice it. Don't just give it out to other people. Practice it, let your character be built on it. And then, now you can teach. I pray the Lord will help every one of us. That you will study, endeavor show yourselves approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth I hope you understand the reason why we have all these corrections and various things is to help our church because you know the spiritual health of the church the spiritual health of the church is more important than the image popularity of any single individual and if we come to so respect appreciate any individual to the point that when lack of preparation lack of study lack of devotedness is lack of giving the best to the church we'll manage it because it's him we cannot correct anybody anymore we we'll rather have the church go down the drain than correct anyone that will be unfortunate but i think for the health of the church for the good of the church for the stability of the church for the maintenance and edification of the church we leaders should make sure that we are very best for the lord and you don't want to do anything that will hinder your pastor or making the necessary corrections if you love the church you say praise the lord we give him all the liberty and we give him all the encouragement to help us in this church correct things that need to be corrected so that if we will be the only Micaiah standing with 400 other denominations going one direction you will not be comparing us well, the 400 churches 400 preachers they're gathering crowd what does that matter you'll unite with your pastor here will stand on this unchanging truth if you stand and love me and accept the word oh that doesn't mean that i'll not have any trouble anymore troubles are always there you don't have to create the trouble the troubles will, will come from you know another direction because everyone that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I have my share, you have your share, but the grace of God is sufficient. But the grace of God will stand. How many of you agree with that? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord on changing word of God. You're not seeking approval from man. You're seeking approval from the almighty God. The world is going in one direction. Can you stand alone? One with God is in the majority. Stand on this unchanging word of God. Don't be tired. Standing on the truth. Don't be tired. Upholding the word of righteousness. If we are compromising already, let's repent. Seek the Lord. And whatever opportunity you have in the church of the living God, study. Endeavor to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly, properly. Dividing the word of truth.